Hi, Clay from Popel's Backyard Farm. Uh, we do our videos and we have people that do follow us and we've had a question from one of our followers. Her name is Tina. Uh, she requested an answer to, she knew that we weren't going to show the actual butchering um, of the quail, which we didn't feel was necessary with all the videos out there that do show it. But she wanted to know how we did it. So I'm going to go through a uh, pretend butcher with you. And this will be my knife. This will be my scissors. And one of these guys will be our, our victim. Okay. All right. Let me. Uh, I'll try to get a male because I don't want the females to. Uh, they've been laying eggs. Matter of fact, I want to show you something. We just picked up some eggs out of this. Alright, here we are. This is a normal egg. Look at the size of that one compared to it. This one's about a size and a half bigger than they should. These are the eggs we want to hatch. Are these great big ones because these are what are going to be our next generation of large jumbo browns. So let's get underway with this. I'll use, use this little male right here. All right, this is. You know what, honey? This you is, might want to move over that way just because that other light's giving me some bad. Right, Sorry, better, guys. <laughs> Okay, I'm done. okay. All right, this little guy is you hold the quail where take your finger and kind of hold around the feet and you hold the wings back so that the only thing that so that they aren't wiggling and I don't have a bucket in here, but um, what we do is we take a bucket and take a garbage bag, put it inside the a bucket. We have a Lowe's, a blue Lowe's bucket is what we used yesterday. And uh, what you do is you take your scissors. Now it sounds like it's going to be, they do wiggle so you really have to hold them, really have to hold them good. He's not as ta tame as Queequay, but he's in there somewhere. So, but we'll use you. You got to be careful. I don't want to hurt you, but we can wiggle them. Okay. I got his feet underneath my little finger and I got his wings in between my thumb and index finger. Now what you do is you take the the bucket, put a garbage bag in it, and then you take your um, kitchen scissors, not regular household cloth scissors or anything. They have to be the heavy duty kitchen poultry scissors. And what you do is you get behind the head and get it aimed down towards the bucket and you cut. Now it sounds like it's going to be very cruel, but once you sever the spinal cord, they don't feel anything more. And you can cut the head off in one clip with the with the poultry scissors, but you have to get behind the head right up tight and then cut. Then you hold the, the quail upside down in the bucket and it will bleed out and you hold it there because he's going to go through and <coughs> and shake and the final nerves will make him just quiver a little bit. You don't and then want when you, they stop moving, then uh, you're ready to do the butcher. Now, what I did after that is you have your wing. We took and cut the wings. All right, you have. If you see the the way the wing is on a chicken or any other bird that you've you've probably put um, cut chicken up for a meal. All right, right where you would have the elbow, which would be just see where these this bunch of feathers are, right in there. See how it goes right down to nothing. There's a you what you do is you you would snap that back at that joint then you cut with the scissors cut that joint right at that joint and you do that to both wings and then with the legs 
try to tur turn you up around here a little bit here so I can show. Not trying to hurt you, boy. You are one of our breeders. I can't hurt you. All right. See where then this would be like our knee, but it's backwards. What you would do then is you would snap this, how that goes forward like that, you would snap that backwards. And it snaps very easy. It doesn't, shouldn't bother you at all. And then you take your scissors and cut it right at that knee joint. Or you, you don't have to snap it back. You can cut it at that knee joint. But what I say is uh, be careful if you cut it other than the cartilage of the knee joint in that because you'll have sharp bones and you might cut yourself. Then you take along the back of the neck where you've cut it off and you cut down into the skin maybe about that much and then you can take at the breastbone put your thumb on both sides of the breastbone and then you just rip and it's like tissue paper it will rip right off you just slowly rip the skin back and off the meat and pull it all the way down to the to the bottom then behind the as you get the skin around the leg you put your finger between the you see the little flap of um, skin around the leg put your finger through that and you just pull the skin down off the the leg and that will that will skin your whole bird then you take and you just cut your breast out and cut your legs off up to the thigh now that's the way we did it yesterday because we wanted to get it all done and we weren't going to they're so small we felt like we wanted to get that part of it yeah. done because th those were those were the cull birds they were the smaller birds they weren't as big as some of the ones that we wanted to keep for breeders so that's how we we salvaged the meat on those next time we do it we'll be doing larger birds so what we're going to do then is you're going to take the head you're going to st still clip the wing and the legs the way I showed you then you pull the skin all off it and but instead of uh, cutting the breast out and cutting the legs off you'll take your scissors and go right down you go right where the neck is and go right down to the to the rear of the bird on one side of the spine and then you butterfly it open and you take your insides and just pull them down out of there and it cleans them right out then you can either keep the spine on there or you can clip down the other side of the spine and butterfly the there I'm gonna put you back you're kind of nervous you don't like to be held that much then you would butterfly the the quail you'd have a, a breast on this side a breast on this side the leg and thigh and the leg and thigh on this side then you can just uh, clean them off and you can use them for the grill or and you could take and put stuffing in the center of them wrap them back up into the shape of the body was wrap them with bacon and bake them that way there's so many ways you can bake and, and cook these that I really can't go into how many different ways but any way you can do a chicken you can do a quail so, Tina, I hope that helped you, and if it didn't, um, write your question a little more so that we can understand exactly what you need to know. But hopefully that showed you how we did it, and I hope that answered your questions. Um, if anybody else has questions, um, feel free to ask. We'll try to answer them the best we can. And... Uh, uh, I don't know what else to say. What do you need to say, Ruthie? I just... Well, we're going to cook quail tonight. I know that. We are going to cook quail and we'll, tonight. And, we'll do and we will do a video on so it, So you can too. see. And I asked Clay to cook tonight. I'm going to... If any of you know what a new wave oven is... <coughs> micro, it's a new wave oven. It's, it's a... It cooks with con, convection and infrared and all that. And it's they're a nice little oven. They, they cook twice or three times faster than a normal oven and they're not they don't dry out your food like a microwave does so we're going to use that and we'll show you what that looks like in one of our in the other video where we show what we're going to do with the quail is we're going to do them in the um, new wave with some garlic butter and 
then we're going to have some garlic mashed potatoes and a vegetable to go with that to make a meal. Um, we're going to have to save one for Rusty because he's not here. He went to to sing to sing with in the choir with some of his friends. But we'll show you what we're doing with that one. We just wanted to kind of update you on the the quail. I changed the cup water because they couldn't trigger the little finger control. But I did put the I did put the nipple water in, and I did catch a couple of them trying to use it. So it's going to take a couple of days for them to really work it. But in the meantime, we'll keep the pot bottle water there. And we still have the heat bulbs for them to stay warm. And two of our guinea pigs were adopted today. Yes, we adopt, er, adopted out two guinea pigs. So that worked out nice for that family. And they were real, real nice family. I think that the guinea pigs will be very happy. And how are you? Noisy, aren't you? And we do. Are you quick, quick? And I will mention this. Yes, yes, quick, quick. We do sell off the excess of our animals, and so you can always email us at popobackyardfarm at gmail dot com if you are in the New York area and are interested in and, animals. And the money that we get for the birds goes right back into the right. feed. Right. So it's not like it goes in our pocket. Um, we're not pushing that to say come buy animals. No. We're just letting you know because some people ask us, and this way you know that we do, but. We're not trying to make. We're, this is a effort of love. <laughs> yeah. The money that we, the money we get from the animals, we put back, back into the into animals. Feed. But, uh, but we plus a lot of our own money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But we, but we just in case you know, because people ask us things, and we're trying to answer things that we get emails and questions about. But Tina asked yes. about the. She knew we weren't going to show the actual butchering, and I don't think it's necessary that we do that where others have already done it and could show you exactly what we did and how we're going to do it the next time. But like I said, because the, the, some of them were small, we took and uh, just took the breasts and legs and thighs. And, and we've never done that with a bird before, have we? What, with the le breasts, legs, and like thighs? Like just skin them down and just not do all the stuff to keep the skin? Maybe, I can't no, remember. No, not, not of the birds we haven't. When we do the... When we do the... The rabbits. The Cornish game chickens, we put them through the chicken plucker. chicken plucker that I built. And there's a quail plucker you might build, maybe. I don't know. It's so easy to butcher them. It seems yeah, crazy to bother with all that. Why waste all that hundred and some dollars to buy a plucker? To... It's so fast. You, It's just it's we, quack. We did 30 of them. Well, almost 30 of them. Like 24, I believe. We did that in less than two hours, and we had coffee and everything in between. So, I mean, it wasn't like it was... It, we weren't, like, stressing out, trying to hurry. keep things... Well, because we try to keep things... To keep every all the, you know, everything moving along. <laughs> it's better, Quee Quay, don't... <laughs> oh, boy. Quee Quay's like, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, it's your good boy. Okay, guys, yeah. I guess... I'm going to close them up for the evening, and we're, we'll do a video on the... The pre preparation of what we're going to do to eat those. Uh, she wanted to know about the freezing. That was another question. The freezing, what we did was after we were done butchering, we put them in water and we put salt in the water. Now, we've heard that they were a little gamey, like, you know, regular quail and any game bird. So we added wa salt to the water, let them set in the salt water, and then after they sat for about an hour or two, we... Uh, Took them out of the water and we divided them up. Now they want, or they they suggest two quail per person for a meal. So we took six breasts and put those in a, a Ziploc freezer quart bag. Put six breasts in one, and we took all the legs and thighs, and I saved the hearts too. Um, because I like the heart and the giblets, they didn't peel off as easy as, say, a chicken giblet, so we didn't bother with the giblets. But we took the legs and the heart, and we put them all into one. All 24 of those birds' legs and hearts fit into one quart baggie. So we're going to what we're going to do with those legs and thighs is we're going to 
do them the same as you would a chicken wing um, come New Year's evening. We're going to just make some sauces, hot sauces, garlic butter sauces, whatever way, sweet and sour, whatever way everybody likes them. We're going to try them that way. I myself like to use the Frank's Red Hot and some butter and mix it up and make a well, we said wing we might, sauce. We might make those for New Year's we're talking about. Yes, that's what so we're going to use make for sure you Make sure you tune in if you're home on New Year's or, yeah, or about that time if you want to see how we do that. Um, because we're going to do that for the New Year's meal. Clay, Clay. But we took and put them in the freezer. So we've got, out of the, the 24, we ended up getting four big quart bags of breasts. So we're going to use one tonight, and I left three for the freezer. And once we uh, we feel that we're going to have, we're going to look at the calendar so that when we hatch the, we're going to buy the Texas A&M eggs, which won't be right away because we don't want to have to winter those quail in the house because uh, we want to be able to get them to three weeks old, then they can come outside. So we're going to have to have a little better weather to get them outside, maybe March. That way when the, the weather starts changing, we can have the Texas A&Ms out here because these quail are going to go in our three-tier um, breeding cages that I have in the garage so that we can collect eggs so that we can go second generation on the, the jumbo browns. And in the meantime, while we're, we're waiting to be able to get the Texas A&Ms, we're going to get Ruthie's button quail. And we'll do the button quail first, then we will do the Texas A&M, then we will do the, and, and the let, jumbo. And let me interject here, too, because I just want to say a couple things while we're here so I don't forget. Um, make sure that you always like and subscribe and all that good stuff. But also, too, we're going to be doing a lot more besides the quail. Um, we have other animals and things down the road. We have some crafts, some cooking things. These we'll let you know when the geese start laying eggs. Yeah. And, and if the hens want to set, we'll go through that with you. And, and just little interesting things. If, if this type of stuff doesn't interest you, I mean, just name some of the things that do interest you. We, sh we show the quail and we show them a lot. And probably some of you really don't want to see all just quail you want to see more on the chickens we're going to move the chicken nest boxes out into this part so that the hens are more in with the quail it also helps to keep because the the chickens right now we haven't had the snow so the chickens think they still have to sleep outside which they don't so once it starts to snow they all come inside and once they all come inside they'll, most of them will be in here and this will help with the keeping the barns warmer and keeping the quail warmer the chickens the body heat from the animals will be a, a godsend for everybody well well also too you're kind of living the life of a farmer seeing up close what a farmer does every day what we do on our farm and so we get excited because oh we're going to raise quail or you know i started the guinea pigs and then maybe three months uh, down the road using oh the, yeah using three, the drinkers three, about this Three months you get one or two of them using the drinkers, and they'll all start using it. Three months down the road, we might be canning like crazy or doing the bucket system. So if you don't see a video that you'd like now, um, yeah. ask us to do come, something. Come or ask spring, us we're going to be doing a lot more. Well, it's, the winter months are kind of hard, but you just follow us. At, Whatever we're doing. We'll try to have the titles tell you exactly what it is. If you want to watch it, watch it. If you don't. Well, but Clay, they can also ask us any questions. Ask it, yes, ask if, us if, anything you want to know. On any video, if we're talking about quail, but you have a question about chickens, go ahead and, yeah, ask, go us, ahead and ask us. Or email us because... Or rabbits or anything. A anything that, you right know, even, ho don't even horses. <laughs> yeah, I'm not... Much. Clay, Clay tell me what he meant me. Horses don't like me. They put their ears back. <laughs> and I showed her that. They just... I must have been something else in a previous life. He, yes, he kids about it because his dad had... They're Lots using, of horses. They're using the drinkers, Mama. And That's and good. who rode the cow in your family? <laughs> we we raised a calf with the horses, and she was the the only heifer in the fence, and she thought she was a horse. So if the horses got out, the cow got out. They all went running in the field, and then they'd run back when it come feeding time. 
So, uh... Teenage boys! <laughs> we were breaking the horses, and the cow just wanted to be in the middle of it, so we broke the cow, too. The cow we got where the, you could ride the cow. Okay, uh, but what I'm telling on you, because now Halloween's over, so we can share it. Uh, what did you give for Halloween? That's, that's another that's Oh, another video. he won't tell. That's another it's video. funny as anything. Come that, on. That was when that's he was teenagers. <laughs> that's... It has to do with... <laughs> no, let's let's go to another it's video. Cute. Like it's cute. It's cute. All the say is... We'll save that for... All the teenagers... Oh, you got to tell no, them. No, no. Yes. I'm not telling it. They... Not until some other video. It's real it's cute. Not, it's not what we need with this video. Okay, but all so I'm going to say is... We're going to... We're going to... We'll have all kinds of funny... That's then a we'll long just, story. We'll just add... A story. We already told them the cow story. How do we broke the cow? Yeah, it's a long story. So we have to. Tell, it's real cute. It's real funny. What, It'll be another video. What the kids all did for Halloween with the with animals. It was a real cute. So anyway, hope you enjoyed today. You can see how they're spaced out now. They're not crowded. They're got more room to grow. They're at the seven week mark, and they'll grow to seven or to eight and nine weeks. So you still got room to grow a little bit more. But as you can see, they're all doing really well, and hopefully the next generation will be as big, if not bigger, because we're going to save all the big eggs to hatch out for the next generation. Now, Clay, I'm freezing. Yes, we're getting ready to so, shut this down. So I'm going to shut this down, and stay tuned for our next video, because you're going to see Clay cooking quail, and you're going to like it. And sorry to lead into a story that we didn't finish, which he will finish for you all. Someday, stay tuned for not, that one, too. Not now. But anyway, have a blessed day. This is Ruthie and Clay at the Popo Backyard Farm. We're going to shut these guys down. I'm freezing out here in the barn because I didn't wear a coat. And, uh, I told you to. I know. I was I was getting sleepy. That's why I asked him to cook. And so I'm going to go in the house to drink a cup of coffee, and he's going to start the dinner, and we're going to go from there. Subscribe, like, and all that good stuff. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.